The floor is yours, Truth. Check, check, check. We are back here. Okay. Hey guys, we are back at the HWBot World Series here in South Africa, and I'm with the winner of the competition, Dr. Wiz, Andrew. Congratulations, yeah. man. How do you feel right now? Yeah, thank you very much, man. Yeah, it feels great to finally win a live comp. <laughs> yeah, how, how many years I was trying to, to win a live competition? Yeah, my first uh, live event was in 2012, so four years. Yeah. So it's a, it's a life achievement so far? Yeah, 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 it's great. So um, you you did went to the qualifier quite fast because of uh, of the four feet of Chuck G, but still uh, you 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 were showing the guys that you what you could do with your with your system. So when um, the first uh, the first semi final was going on between um, Quantum X and VV uh, doing 3D Mark 11 physics core, you were actually benching that benchmark as well. Um, why did you do that in the, in the first place? Was that was that just to show that you could do it, or just to put some um, like pressure on them uh, it was not to put pressure on it all it was really just to 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 run the qualifier or to run the the, the semi-final so that i could go through the whole motion of the competition because it's a really new format i think it's really important to really go through each step and to get to grips with the the, the tough time to remount and warm up and dry up it's really important to understand the whole picture if you know what i mean so you basically like train yourself while the other guys were doing it at exactly the same pace that they were uh, they were having yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what I did was I stood there when they were doing the draw, so I could see what was happening. And at the same time, when they were given three, two, one, go, I started doing the same time period, same benchmark, and just went through it, so I could experience the the same thing that they were going through. And, and then we had the same amount of preparation time after the fact as well. So to get back to room temperature, get rid of the moisture and to clean the board and, and to run with it. That's, uh, that is a quite an interesting uh, strategy for that. Have you, is that something you did prepare over the last few benching sessions you were doing uh, live on your Twitch channel? Yeah, the, the funny thing is I had great plans to test E-Die, B-Die and all these different things and unfortunately real life got in the way and I only did about two sessions worth of planning and it wasn't even with CP on cold, it was really just to to make sure that I could get through the qualifiers and make it into the semi-finals. Uh, I spent more time here in Cape Town preparing for the semi-finals than I did before the event. Okay, and um, let's talk a little bit more about the, the preparation before going to the, uh, the final itself. The preparation here, did you think that was uh, more difficult to prepare during a live event or prepare at home? Yeah, ultimately if you can prepare everything at home it's the way to go, but uh, some of us that aren't doing this full-time have real-life issues and you must just do the best you can do well that's uh, that's the man speaking right here so let's talk yeah. back let's uh, switch back to the, uh, the 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 final that uh, that did happen earlier today and actually just a few minutes ago that did crown new champion of the edge robot world uh, series here in uh, south africa yeah. so the, just the drawing of the benchmark was something we were actually quite laughing about so yeah what happened is peter Draw the first benchmark out of the of the basket, and the first benchmark is reference clock. Yes. What did you feel at this very moment? Uh, well, reference clock. When I was thinking about the format at home, trying to figure out what I was going to veto first and what my priorities were, reference clock was always the the first on my list. It's it's quite an easy uh, benchmark to run, but it takes time to really fine tune it in. So it was always going to be something that I didn't want to do, and uh, when it came up, I like looked at Gotti and he was like, looked at me and he wanted to veto it, I wanted to veto it, but he didn't want to use up his veto, veto because he really didn't want to run Geekbench or, or um, GPU, uh, Pi, yeah. GPU Pi. So he, I was like, he was looking at me and I was looking at him and we almost got stuck with it because none of us really wanted to waste our veto on it. But at the end of the day, I, I really wasn't interested in running reference clock uh, in a live competition environment. You really got to have patience and tune it in. And uh, then the next benchmark was XTU. And yeah. did you have any issue with XTU? And okay, let's let's face it. If Vivi would have veto reference clock, would you have veto XTU? I probably would have vetoed XTU, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I would much have per preferred something like uh, 1M or um, 3D Mark 11 physics. Um, or something a lot quicker. Maybe W Prime even would have been a nice selection. W Prime 32, like five seconds benchmark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something that you can really just run, 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 and uh, it doesn't take a, a 30 seconds or a minute and a half, and it's not heavy load. 
that, that was my, my first choice, but I'm quite happy with XT. I think it worked out all right for me. Well, uh, that was uh, that did turn out great for you. So yeah. uh, let's go now in into the game, into the match. Um, how did you start building up your your system? We, because we saw you like pouring yeah. like like crazy straight from the start. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah, was your sure. strategy right there? Well, with the the, uh, the semi final, I made sure that I was able to have a look at my temperatures, at what speed my temperatures were dropping, as well as what load I could run, what sort of test. So I, I had four or five different steps that I could go for from minus, from ambient temperature to minus 40 to minus 60, minus 80, minus 120, and then from there go to full pot. And my plan was always just to get a baseline score in, from there start cooling the pot down and hit each one of my milestones and build and build and build. Uh, what I find was this type of format, you've just got to get, you got to get your foot, one foot in front of the other and just keep going. And that's how you did. You did try to improve, and you did actually yeah. put like a, a score above eighteen hundred quite fast. Like yeah. in the in the first ten minutes, you already had that score, and you, you were actually struggling after that to to, to improve that score. Yeah. What what happened is is once the pot got to sort of minus one seventy five, and then you heat up and you get cold. You heat up, you get cold. The pot almost becomes too quick, and it becomes difficult to maintain that that constant temperature that you actually need for XTU. So. I always had a feeling that once I had hit that point, there was no real gain other than maybe playing with memory timings, but the time period is really tight. You know, you don't have a lot of time. That's part of, that's part of the game, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's what makes it interesting because if you guys had like eight hours to do that, that would have been like, okay, he definitely had the, the, the best way of doing the, the things or best way to go tweak or the best tweak ever or the best hardware and these 30 minute slot. You don't have this. You don't have this. You cannot have this. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how the the things happen in Europe next weekend with the likes of Extreme Addict and Dan Cop and and all those big names. Wizard T is another big one. You know, all experiencing this type of format for the first time. That's that's the thing. These guys have been experiencing a lot of live uh, live competition, but that's the yeah. first time they're going to experience this very format. So things right. can completely change. That's yeah. that's the best about this SWBot World Series. It's yep. completely new format. It's completely new way of uh, of benching. It's completely new way of you have to prepare yourself, not in trying to find the best hardware, but just in trying to find the best way to get out the most out of your hardware. So that's yep. uh, that's changing a little bit of the game. And also to to discover where your preferences are, or where your priorities are. Uh, having the tightest and fastest memory is not necessarily the best way to approach this. You need to have a look at uh, all aspects of it, really. Maybe if your core is a higher priority than your memory clocks and 30 minutes is not a long time to recover from some complications. Well, let's say you have a cold bug or you have to re-eat a lot and then cool down again, that's uh, yeah. going to lose some precious time for you guys. Yeah, yeah look, I'm quite excited as well because uh, next weekend they're using the same motherboard that we used, uh, the MSI X-Power Gaming Titanium Edition. And these boards are, well, very competitive, also come with the challenges when, when working at some extreme temperatures. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle those in the qualifiers and the, the, the semi-finals and then obviously the final. That's going to be quite interesting. And uh, talking about your, your testing, so uh, you finished first year at the Edge uh, World Series, but you do prepare a lot and you do prepare a lot as well uh, yeah. beforehand. And you do live stream. You do live stream on your Twitch channel. I think it's uh, twitch.tv uh, forward slash drweez underscore OC. Uh, the link yeah. was posted earlier on, uh, on the live chat. Yeah. And um, what are you actually uh, focusing on when you do these uh, live sessions? Well, the, the streams are really just to show people the ups and downs of uh, extreme overclocking. So it's not always about setting world records. A lot of it is preparations, testing hardware, and uh, just trying to engage with more and more people to to spread the love almost, you know. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of self-promotion and trying to get people aware of my brand and what we're capable of doing. but. Generally speaking, the the chat is always open, and I engage with the people there and, and answer questions and show them what it's all about. Yeah. So that's uh, that's quite interesting. You you're having your YouTube channel as well. That is uh, where you post your replay and you post like some OC work log as well. Yeah. So after each uh, OC session, I try and do a a quick sort of like video diary of what uh, what happened that session. It's sort of like a confession booth almost, as what happened, what went, what went happened. Uh, good and what happened bad and you know, the horrible thing about the stream is that there's no hiding a good session or a bad session everything's open to the public so that's sort of like my little method to deal with uh, a good a bad session and celebrate a good session 
Well, that's the thing. And if it's live, you know at the end that it was a bad session. You don't know at the beginning. So yeah. That's, that's yeah. always yeah. what's fun. Yeah. So uh, if you guys are interested in uh, following Dr. Wiz, uh, what are the, uh, the places they can find you? Right, so uh, you can catch me on Facebook as well. So that's Facebook forward, facebook.com forward slash Dr. Wiz dot OC. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then I'm also on Instagram. Just search for Dr. Wiz. And I post a lot of uh, overclocking related items on Instagram. Perfect, and of course your Twitch channel and YouTube uh, channel as yeah, we yeah, uh, just speak before. Mentioned those, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's that's perfect. Well, what will you do, and how will you prepare for the Edgeberry Bot World Championship final in December? Then, yeah, definitely going to take a lot more time to to really go through uh, the hardware and prepare for a lot more scenarios than I did for this event. Uh, I now know that I will be using which hardware I'll be using for the final. So it enables me to really go through and spend a lot of time in building sort of catalog of uh, scenarios that I can then apply in a hurry and and hopefully do well there as well. And you did experience this kind of format as well. So that will be a little bit more easy for you to, uh, to yes. do that on the next one. And I will be in Taiwan as well for, for the, the Taipei leg. And I will be taking part, even though I've already got my, my ticket to Berlin, I'll still need to <laughs> practice more. So it's like like oh yeah I want to try to qualify twice and try to do a match against myself. Not at all. <laughs> this this will all be about dry runs and practicing really. Just so to just want sure. to like to to feel your other opponent to see like okay yeah. are they more like this more like this. Yes, there and is that, that side to it as well. That's gonna be uh, quite interesting to see you again in uh, in June in Taiwan. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Dr. Wiz, for uh, your time here. And congratulations again for your uh, great performance. And we're going to hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah. you guys can always catch him up on his uh, twitch.tv channel or his uh, YouTube or Facebook or Instagram account. For us, that's going to be the end of this coverage for the HWBot World Series here in South Africa. But tune in and tomorrow morning. We will have the HWBot World Series for amateur final. And the amateur will be competing on the MSI Z170A uh, Gaming Pro Carbon uh, motherboard from MSI that will be using the core Intel Core i7 6700K uh, paired with uh, two times four gigabytes of uh, G-Skill memory. The same one that you guys use today, actually. So the uh, yeah, amateur guy will use yeah. Yeah. the uh, the amateur guy will use the exact same memory stick that the guys use in the extreme. And uh, all that is being powered by the Seasonic PSU 760 Watt Platinum Edition. Am I missing something? Oh yeah, and uh, that would be cooled on by the H80 um, H80i GT from Corsair, the all-in-one water cooling solution. So uh, thank you everyone for tuning in in this live show. That was a great time with you guys to um, to spend some time on the live. If you have any question, you can always ask us on the social media with the hashtag HWT2016. And we will see you again tomorrow. So if you want to get the information then when we go live, follow us on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter or right here on Twitch in the uh, description uh, below right here. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, give it a thumbs up to congratulate this guy, Dr. Wiz, number one overclocker in South Africa and now the qualified champion for the HWBot World Series South Africa. We're going to see you all tomorrow morning. Until then, keep pushing it. Happy benching. <laughs>